One feature now available in 3ds Max that has been available in many other Autodesk products is the ability to create and use multiple production workspaces. A workspace is a predefined user interface layout that you can change at any time in order to optimize the interface for varying production needs. Accessing the workspaces is done from the Quick Access Toolbar. Clicking on the workspaces dropdown reveals both the available workspaces and the workspace menu. Let's go ahead and change to one of the available workspaces. From the Quick Access Toolbar, click on the workspaces dropdown. The current workspace is set to the workspace default. We can see this by the check mark to the left of the workspace name. To change to a new workspace, simply click on the workspace name in the upper section of the dropdown. From the dropdown, click on Alternate Layout Workspace. Once you click the workspace name, your interface will rearrange and the new workspace will be visible. To return to the original workspace, click the workspaces dropdown and choose Workspace Default. The interface will return to the original default workspace layout. If you want to create your own workspaces, you can configure the UI with your own toolbars and use Manage Workspaces to save a new workspace. To access the Manage Workspaces dialog, click on the Workspaces dropdown and choose Manage Workspaces. From the Manage Workspaces dialog, you can save the current configuration as a new workspace. Or you can set a workspace as the default state. Go ahead and close the dialog. Whether you are using this tutorial series from CAD Learning as a guide, or have taken hands-on classes with me or another trainer, the 3ds Max Help System is one of the best resources available to you. The 3ds Max Help System is a browser-based HTML help system that provides extensive information about the tools available within 3ds Max and 3ds Max Design. Let's take a look at how to use the help system and how it can be used to assist you as you learn the software. From the main toolbar, click Help. Then click the Autodesk 3ds Max Design Help to bring up the 3ds Max Help in the default web browser. In my case, my default browser is Mozilla Firefox. When the help file first opens, you're presented with the What's New in Autodesk 3ds Max 2013 content page. The help file is split into two panels. On the left side is the browser, a hierarchical table of contents. On the right side is the window that displays the currently selected topic. Notice that at the top of the table of contents panel, you can choose between four tabs for finding the information you're looking for in the help file. With the content tab selected, you can browse for information by opening up each of the chapters listed in the table of contents. For example, open the Creating Geometry chapter by clicking the plus to the left of the heading. We'll see a list of subchapters. If we click on the Creating Geometry entry in the table of contents, we'll see information in the right window regarding what's in this chapter. From the subchapter list, open the Geometric Primitives topic heading, and then click on the Geometric Primitives topic label. Again, we can see what is covered within this subchapter. Now go ahead and open the standard primitives topic heading. You'll see a list of pages that contain information for each topic in this subchapter. Clicking on the box primitive page, we can see a description of the box primitive, simple procedures on how to create a box, and the breakdown of the box parameters interface. You can see here a description of each of the parameters for the box primitive object as well as tips about box creation. Clicking on the Index tab in the browser displays a comprehensive list of all the commands within 3ds Max and 3ds Max Design. You can perform a keyword search that will allow you to select topics based on your keyword. For example, 
Type the word primitive into the keyword search text box. Then click the view button. The first topic with primitive in the title is the standard primitive box page. Clicking on the next button will take you to the next page with primitive in its title. Clicking on the search tab allows you to type in a search keyword or set of keywords and search for only those topics containing the keywords. Again, type the word primitive into the text box and then click search. You'll see in the search results box all the entries that contain the term primitive. Click on the first entry, geometric primitives. You'll see in the right window all the instances of the search term highlighted. You can turn this option off by clicking the highlight on off checkbox in the left panel. We can also set this page to be one of our favorites. That way we can easily get back to it when we need to. In the upper right side, in the right window, we see a small star icon. Click on this icon in order to set the page as a favorite. Now click on the favorites option in the left panel. You should see the geometric primitives page listed in the favorites window. Additionally, you can type in a search term in the info center search box in the upper right side of the main 3ds Max interface. In the Info Center entry box, type the term Primitive, then click on the search icon to the right of the entry box. This displays the search results in the browser. You can see how the 3ds Max help system can be used when you're working through any tutorial or hands-on lesson. If you have a question about the function of a specific parameter, or would like to explore additional 3ds Max commands. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to interact with objects in the scene. We're going to go through methods of object selection, the use of object transform tools, and how to change the reference coordinate system and utilize different coordinate systems. Click on the 3ds Max application button. Click the Open button. From the Open File dialog, Navigate to the Chapter 1 folder in the Understanding 3D Project folder. Select the file Chapter 1 Objects 01. Then click Open to open the file. What you see is a very simple scene made up of three different types of primitive objects. One teapot, one plane, and three spheres. We're first going to look at methods of selecting objects. The simplest way to select objects is by clicking on that object in one of the viewports. For example, in the left viewport, it's easy to click on the teapot. However, if you want to click on the plane, it would be easier in the perspective viewport. Go ahead and click on the teapot in the left viewport by clicking the left mouse button on top of the teapot. This selects the teapot object and makes it available for you to work with. Then, in the perspective viewport, click on the plane to select it. Notice that when you select the plane, the teapot gets deselected. Let's say you want to select more than one object. There are several ways to accomplish this. One way is to use the control key while selecting objects. In the perspective viewport, you should already have the plane selected. Hold the control key down and left click on the teapot. Now you have two objects selected. If you look in the status bar in the lower left hand side of the interface, you'll see that you have two objects selected. To deselect these objects, click in any viewport in an open space. Another way of selecting objects is to use a window or crossing window to select multiple objects at the same time. Let's go ahead and set a preference that will allow us to use a standard window when we drag in one direction and a crossing window when we drag in the opposite direction. In the main toolbar, click on the Customize drop-down menu. From the drop-down menu, choose the Preferences option. This opens up the 3ds Max Preferences dialog. Make sure you're in the General panel. If not, 
Click on the General tab in order to open up the General Panel. In the Scene Selection area, you'll see that I already have the Window slash Crossing by Direction option checked. If you do not have it checked, go ahead and click in the checkbox for the Auto Window Crossing by Direction option. You'll see that we have the option for right to left or left to right to equal the crossing window. We're going to leave the right to left option active. Go ahead and click OK to close the dialog box. We're going to select the three spheres that are on the left hand side underneath the plane. Place your cursor on the left hand side of the top sphere near the middle of the sphere. Click and drag down to the right until you enclose the two spheres beneath where we originally clicked. When you release the mouse button, you should notice that you only have two objects selected. This is because we selected them with a windowed selection, and only the objects inside the window are selected. Click off in space somewhere to deselect all the objects. Now place your cursor on the right-hand side of the top sphere. Then click and drag down to the left and just make sure that the rectangle crosses all the objects. You'll also notice that this rectangle is not a solid rectangle, but is a dashed line rectangle. The dashed line represents the crossing window, whereas the solid line represents a windowed selection. When you release the mouse button, you should see all three spheres selected. Let's go ahead and transform an object. At the same time, we're going to learn a little bit about utilizing reference coordinate systems. In the top viewport, click on the teapot to select it. What we want to do is rotate the teapot so it's looking forward and up the plane. Then, we want to move the teapot based on the angle of the surface of the plane. That way, it looks like the teapot is moving up along the ramp. There are three ways to quickly access the transform tools. The simplest way is to use the keyboard shortcut, where W is the keyboard shortcut for move, E is the keyboard shortcut for rotate, and R is the keyboard shortcut for scale. The other methods are to use the toolbar buttons from the main toolbar. These three buttons represent the Select and Move, the Select and Rotate, and the Select and Scale tools. The third method is to choose the option from the right-click quad menu. Right-click on top of the teapot in the top view, and choose Rotate from the right-click quad menu. Press A on the keyboard to enable angle snap. This will allow us to rotate at fixed degree increments. In the top view, click on the ring for the Z-axis. It's the inside ring that looks like a complete circle in the top view. Click and drag the mouse up and rotate the teapot 90 degrees. If you've done this correctly, the teapot will be facing the plane. Right-click in the left view. This will activate the left view without deselecting any of the objects. This is a very important technique to understand. When you're working with objects, you'll be switching viewports on a regular basis. If you left-click in the viewport to activate it, you'll deselect any currently selected objects. So if you want to activate a viewport while you're working on an object, simply right-click. In the left viewport, click and drag on the Z-rotation axis. Drag the cursor up and rotate the teapot 20 degrees. You may wonder why we rotated on the Z-axis in the top view and the Z-axis in the left view. That's because we're using the View Reference Coordinate System. Each viewport is represented by its own XYZ coordinate system. So changing from the top viewport to the left viewport also changes the coordinate system you're working in. Now, let's go ahead and move the teapot over to the ramp. 
Then we'll move the teapot along the plane so it appears to be going up the ramp. Press W on the keyboard to activate the Select and Move tool. In the left viewport, put your cursor over the x-axis of the transform gizmo. If you need to zoom out, you can use the middle mouse scroll wheel and scroll the wheel down. That will zoom the viewport out just a little bit. With the cursor over the x-axis, move the teapot over to the left just enough so that it appears to be on the surface of the ramp. To make it easier to move the teapot up the ramp, we're going to change the coordinate system to the ramp's local coordinate system and use that system to move the teapot. In the main toolbar, click on the Reference Coordinate System dropdown. Choose the Pick option from the drop-down list. From the top view, click on the plane object in order to use its reference coordinate system. Right-click in the left viewport. You'll see the axis for the transform gizmo now lines up with the plane. Place your cursor over the y-axis, then click and drag the mouse up along the ramp. You should see the teapot moving along the surface of the plane, just like it's moving up a ramp. Using the proper selection options, along with transforms, while making use of the appropriate reference coordinate system, can make creating and editing objects in a scene much easier and much more efficient.